Brian Newman surveying the damage and wants to help try to repair that Alltel Dodge and get back out on the racetrack first. He's got to deal with the swell of cameras and microphones and notepads that have been thrust in front of him. Some teams are packing up and others are packing on repairs. There's the cat in the hat, Jack Roush, who has two of the four lead lap cars, one of which is Mark Martin, the other is Matt Kenzen. Here's Dick. A story with Mark Martin, Mike Joy. Just before they dropped the green flag, Mark and crew chief Pat Trison were talking about how worried they were because they were starting all the way in the back of the pack, even though they were in the fourth position and, in fact, on the lead lap. And the great concern was they might get into something. But because they were so far back, when things began to happen coming off the fourth corner, Mark just checked up, nobody behind him. He let it all happen in front of him. Everybody crashed. He came out in second position. Now, he has run through some debris on the racetrack, and there's conversation with Pat Trison as to whether they should come in and put new tires on it to make sure that one of those tires was not damaged. They haven't made that decision yet. But Mark Martin, right now, in second position, thinking man race car driver, he played it smart. And the reason he had to start so far back, uh, Daryl? Yeah, he, he got the lucky dog, and he got to go all the way around. The guy that wasn't so lucky, though, was Jimmy Johnson, because, remember, he came on pit road, he started back there with Mark, and uh, he had to go by, and, and Jimmy could go in front of Mark because Mark had to go at the end of the longest line, and Jimmy gets crashed. Well, Jeff, if you're Mark Martin, I mean, the choice shouldn't be a hard one. There's only four cars on the lead lap. Why wouldn't you come and get tires? Don't beat yourself, Mike. That's what I'd be saying right now. It's, hey, come on, man. You know what the big picture is. Let's come get his four tires. Let's make sure you get you a fresh drink of water. You need to clean your windshield. Make sure everything's just like it needs to be, and let's lock and load try to get us a win. And uh, at least uh, 19 cars, I'm still working the calculator here, at least 19, 19 cars involved uh, in, in that wreck. Still waiting on the insurance adjuster to come along here and tell us how the, many people have been torn up, right? monster <laughs> mile. I guess the monster's <laughs> winning this one. Definitely this has roared all of a sudden. Uh, and we said everything happened so quickly here at Dover. This is what we're talking about. When some one person gets out of control, this racetrack is very narrow. You're coming so quick that nobody can avoid the other guy. We've seen this on a very rare situation have guys been on one car incident most of the time it's a multi-car accident right, let's go uh, to somebody who was leading the race last time we talked to him now he's fixing a car matt yokum is standing by matt chris let's talk to kenny francis the crew chief for jeremy mayfield now kenny trying to make the best of a bad situation i see some body parts here in the pit what do you need to do to this race car to get it back on the racetrack well we're not gonna have time to do much we just gotta get the fenders off the tires mainly and you know see if we can run a reasonable speed to not get not lose too many more laps i think it's about all we can do I know this has to be pretty heartbreaking for you and his team. You guys had a great car trying to capitalize on that pole winning run. Well, it's disappointing. You know, you, you know, you end up with a situation like that with a bunch of people that don't need to be up there. And I don't know. It's just a mess. You know, you get cars that that are that should have been up there that were on the tail end of the lead lap, and you get some cars up there on the bottom that probably shouldn't have been. I couldn't really see what happened, but you know, every time that happens, it's usually a mess. Well, they've got a lot of parts here in the pit or front fascia. They've got a game plan. Out on pit road, each member on pit road has a job to do when the field goes back to caution, Dick. Well, with Larry Carter, his driver, Rusty Wallace, right now is in the sixth position. Car up there looks a little damaged. How bad is it? Well, we've been talking to Roger on the radio a little bit. It's Roger Penske. Yeah, and he's been filling us in on what it looks like. And uh, Jeff Burton rolled up alongside of us there and gave us a good idea of what we're up against. So it looks like we'll be able to maybe just beat it out and get him back out there. Okay, good luck with it. Rusty's had a good day until that crash. Chris? All right, thanks. So uh, I think it's 18 now, the official count. And that's Roger Penske up there. They've been, <clears throat> excuse me, talking to uh, to him. He's the uh, basically the commander-in-chief of Penske Racing. And uh, as we see right there, those are the cars that are involved in the crash. And what about damage control here at this point? Well, Kenny Francis kind of was talking that about that with Matt. And what happens in a situation like this, the crew chief and the car chief, they get together, they look at the car under this red flag condition, make a determination of what they're going to try to cut off as quickly as possible, what tires, what body, you know, what maybe mechanical parts need to be replaced with the radiator, the front nose, uh, fascia, whatever needs to be done to get this race car back on the track as quickly as possible so you don't lose any more laps than you need and try to save in points. And guys taking a hit, uh, Jeff Gordon, uh, Elliot Sadler was in a wreck earlier. We saw Ryan Newman, who's out of the race now. Ryan Newman and uh, Jimmy Johnson both officially out. They are uh, packing up. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, the Matt Kenseth's crew a uh, reason to smile at this yeah, point. Robbie Reiser and Jack Rash uh, sharing a little bit of uh, 
humor, I guess, between the two of them. But uh, that's the forces of war, you might say, as far as what happens when you go into a, a place like Dover. Casey Kane, the leader. We are red flag. Let's go back upstairs and rejoin Larry, Darrell, and Mike. Well, there's a casino right across the way here at Dover Downs, uh, the hotel and casino off the backstretch. Let's see. Jack Roush, once they move Jeff Burton around for the free pass, is going to have three cars in the lead lap. Joe Gibbs will have one. Tony Stewart and Ray Evernham will have one. Casey Kane. I like Jack Roush's odds, but Stewart and Kane have been fast all day. Yeah, and Kane will be out front. And, you know, it's a shame when things like this happen. Uh, I've seen it happen time and time again. I know you have too. When the leader restarts back in the middle of the pack like that, uh, this this is usually what happens. And uh, I don't know how you fix it, but I wish there was somebody would give us an idea. Maybe we could get it done. And just like yesterday's wreck, Larry, the one that put us under the caution at lap 15 that led to the red flag for rain, you have some cars trying to slow up and miss the wreck, and some cars trying to keep from getting hit from behind, and... I mean, that's typical Dover. Things are happening so fast here, and I couldn't help but chuckle when Dick Bergman was talking about Mark Martin. He was in the perfect position because we saw in the replay, he just stopped because there was no one behind him that could shove him in the wreck like we saw Jimmy yeah. Johnson get shoved into it. Yeah, that was the perfect storm over there. Mark right. avoided it. But, Darrell, that's got to be tough for a driver. Do you want to slow down and miss the wreck? Or do you want to worry about somebody running into the back of you? You, you really don't think that way. I mean, you just, you're just dodging whatever's in front of you. You know, cars start spinning. You start looking for a hole. Uh, you're going to get off the throttle. Uh, you know, it's just it's a chain reaction. There's not a whole heck of a lot a driver can do. He just closes his eyes, <laughs> even though you don't. Uh, but that's what we always say, and then hope for the best. Let's look at the top ten in Nextel Cup points as they came in here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was not having a great day, but he's, now 14th a lap down. Jimmy Johnson's in the crash. Matt Kenseth is a beneficiary. He comes around. He's back on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon hit the wall earlier and parked his car. Tony Stewart, like Kenseth, is back in the hunt. Bobby Labonte spent some time in the garage making repairs. So did Elliot Sadler. Kurt Busch is a lap down. Ryan Newman is wrecked. And Kevin Harvick is two laps down. So going to be a wholesale change in the points after today. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he just barely got by that wreck. He went all the way to the apron, almost into the grass, and just barely scaved by. And Kenseth, too. I mean, he just shot right through the hole there, he and the Kane both. We'll take another look at it when we come back. Eighteen cars have been wrapped up in a pileup in turn number three in the MBNA America 400 on FX. Flag period's over. The caution is out. Work begins on the cars on pit road and the in the garage after an 18-car pileup that swept up leader Jeremy Mayfield in mid-pack. Dave Blaney and Michael Walter get together. Let's have a look. There, they're clear. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. And clear. Ah, oh, we in it, boys. That was Dave Blaney's spotter you heard clearing him, except he wasn't quite clear. Darrell, I think that pretty much the, the spotter with that, that video right there, just Dave Blaney, he was trying to get up the racetrack where he could make the right entrance into turn three, and he just was not clear of Michael Walker. Yeah, I think it's the, there was something happened here. You go off a of turn two. You see Michael got out there. I think he might have had to get out of the throttle. I think Blaney thought he had him clear. Didn't quite make it. point out the audio was recorded separately from the video not synced up exactly in real time from Dale Jr. We see how Michael slowed uh, that's that that caused that three wide thing and uh, I think Blaney just got got back tried to get back in line too quickly Boy, watch this <laughs> That was Greg Biffle. Here's Rusty. And Ricky Rudd.
See, when you're back here like this, you can't really see anything. You just start to see the smoke, and the spotter starts to holler at you. But you really don't see that many cars in front of you. And from our Quaker State aerial coverage. There you see the 9 of Kane has just gone past the 99 of Jeff Burton. That's why Burton is the first car one lap down. And then everything clogs up behind them. Pit road is open. Kurt Busch elected to come in early and take the penalty so they could have plenty of time to make repairs. Same to uh, Kevin Harvick. This is for lead lap cars only, so really and truly Casey Kane, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, Matt Kenseth are the only ones that can pit. Ward Burton in the zero car, he's just pitting early because he's trying to repair damage to his car. Jeff Burton that got the free pass, he has to wait to the second time to come to pit road to see Matt Kenseth. I'm sure all these pit stops will be for four tires. Just put some fuel, Steve. Larry Mack, Robbie Rise with the crew chief telling his guys, come on, there's only four of us on pit road, let's do this right. Right side tires for Kenseth, now left side tires, no other adjustments, Dick. Mark Martin, same deal, four tires, no adjustments to the automobile. A long discussion trying to decide whether this was the right thing to do or not. Now, the 20 car, Tony Stewart in as well, getting four sticker tires. No chassis adjustments for Stewart. He felt like, though, he needed to be a little bit more free at the beginning of the run. 